The roundhouse kick. It, it's like driving a Camry or marrying an accountant. Sure, it's mundane, but it's dependable. When it comes to sparring, dependable is what you want. I know that spinning hook kick looks sexy, just like a guy with a band. I know there's a chance it will land and score you a beautiful knockout. And I know there's a chance that that guy's band might get big. But realistically, what are the odds? Go with the sure thing. Go with what's dependable. Marry the accountant and score points with your roundhouse kicks. To make your roundhouse kick as dependable as an accountant driving a Camry, check out my breakdown on how to do the kick along with common mistakes that you need to avoid. Let's look at how to do a formal roundhouse kick. Now I say formal because there are many ways to do roundhouse kicks in Taekwondo. However, if you looked it up in a textbook, this would be the official way to do a roundhouse kick. And the nice thing is, if you get down the formal version, all the other variations are much easier to do. When doing a roundhouse kick, the base foot should pivot. And when you pivot, you should do so on the ball of your foot, just like all the other techniques in Taekwondo. When you pivot your base foot, it allows your hip to roll over, which is where the power is generated when doing a roundhouse kick. When kicking, your base leg should lock straight. You should push it into the floor. Hey, don't be a freeloader. Give me a thumbs up right now. Click thumbs up. If you turn your foot correctly, it won't be too difficult to get the hip to roll over. So if you look at my upper body here, when my hip rolls over, my head goes behind my knee and shoulder. Now this is a byproduct of the hip rotation, but it also helps to keep your head safe from danger. When chambering for the roundhouse kick, you want your knee to point directly in front of you and your foot to pull around to your back side. This allows you to easily hit with your instep and kick on a line that's parallel with the floor or a horizontal line. Notice from here my knee points straight in front of me and my foot is pulled behind my back so that it's chambered to kick out using the instep. When you put it all together, it should look something like this. I can already hear some of you reply guys who can only think in one dimension and you're like, oh, you have to hit with your shin. You can't hit with your instep. Your shin is harder and it's going to do more damage. You know what? Learn to think in more than one freaking dimension. Guess what? It's just like engineering. Sure, you want a snow tire in the winter. But you don't want one in the summer, you want a summer tire. It's the same thing with martial arts techniques. There are pros and cons. Yeah, hitting with your shin can be really effective. What's the pro of using your instep? You get more reach. Oh, did I blow your mind, you little one-dimensional idiot? Here's the thing. If my opponent is further away and I want to kick them, I should use my instep. It's going to reach out further. If my opponent is closer, or I want to be closer to my opponent, then sure, the shin can be a great weapon. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Think like an engineer. Think on a few different levels at once. Pros and cons. Now, some of you aren't going to like this, but when you're talking about sport taekwondo, and you want to score with a roundhouse kick, you have to hit with your instep because that's where the sensors are. Oh, that's not practical for the street. It's a sport, okay? Shut up. Nobody thinks Taekwondo sparring is going to topple the Viet Cong, okay? It's a sport, just like all other martial arts have sport components. Are you gonna punch someone with a boxing glove on? Obviously, sports have rules and Taekwondo wants you to hit with the instep. I've threatened a lot of you for not going to my website, tkdguide.com, and I just want to say I'm sorry. I shouldn't be threatening you. But here's the thing, 
I'm just really passionate about my website, tkdguide.com. It's got free video courses on Taekwondo stances. It's got follow along exercises to supercharge your Taekwondo. And it's got follow along forms and it's all free right now. I want you to go check that out. I'm just, I'm just really passionate. Can you do me a favor and just, just go check it out. That's all. Let's look at some of the common mistakes people have when performing roundhouse kicks. I'd say the worst offender is under rotating the base foot. So that doesn't let your hip turn and then you miss out on the sweet, sweet power generation. If you're thinking of a roundhouse kick as generating its power through lifting, I see this a lot. It may look something like this. Notice here that my base foot isn't turning much. I'm trying to generate force by pushing up with my body like this. It may feel powerful, but once you coordinate the rotation of the hip, you're able to transfer your body weight much more effectively. Like the other kicks, a lot of people get their foot position wrong when performing a roundhouse kick. If you have a hard time coordinating your feet, try this simple exercise. To get in a foot position for roundhouse kick, simply flatten your feet. From here, you can practice rolling over on your side and practice your chamber and then kicking out with a flat foot. While you're on the floor, it can be a good idea to practice the other foot kicking positions as well. So if I want to do a side kick, I'd pull my toes all the way back and push my heel out. And if I want to do a front kick, I would flatten and then pull my toes back, maintaining that line. Now, if we're talking a formal roundhouse kick, the other mistake I commonly see is that people's chambering knee crosses over the center line of their body. By that, I mean that when they chamber, they come up like this. And you see here that my knee passes my center line. Now, if you're just talking about sparring, as long as you hit the target, you're good. That can be a useful way to chamber. But if you're talking about pumse performance, where you're trying to get your body to do a very specific discipline task, the roundhouse kick should involve a knee chamber where the knee points straight out in front of you and does not cross your center line. Be aware of that if you're doing roundhouse kicks for pumse, such as in Taegok 6. There you have it, friends, the most dependable kick in Taekwondo. Until next time.